All right. Well, let us uh, bring on Rebecca. <gasps> Rebecca, hello. <laughs> Guys, I'm so sorry. If, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I, so apparently Chrome is the way to go here, and I am behind the times. Um, my daughter's my 10-year-old. <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, no worries. Like, oh, no, no, no. This no, is like wrong. <laughs> How are you guys? We're good. good. How are you doing? How are you? I know I, you're sick. You were sick or you're sick. Yes, or... yes, yes. And and thank you so much for having me regardless. I, I apologize for that. No, yeah. Uh, no worries. Thank so you. How um, are you guys doing? Oh, we're, we're good. We're doing our song and dance every Tuesday, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like your biggest fan. Oh, thank oh you. thanks. You that, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Much appreciated. I, think I love so, the snow pizza thing. Yeah. Um, now that you're on. Uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome, Chris. <laughs> now, now, you know, now, now that you're on, um, let's get right into it. I mean, um, now we are here to inform and educate our community, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody is an adult. They can do whatever they choose to do. However, we always, always suggest that you have to have, have as many tools as a gig worker in your toolbox yeah. to be able to be more efficient, maximize your earnings, your utilization factor will be better, whatever not, right? So I feel like Kid Kaboo is mm -hmm. another tool or potentially could be another yeah. tool in the toolbox. Now, with that said, please introduce yourself. Please tell us about Kid Kaboo and the floor is yours. Thank you so much. And I appreciate that. And I think Harry's always pointed out what you just did. Um, I, um, I was in Los Angeles and fell into television production, reality TV, d documentary pr producing, moved up quickly and, and spent about 15 years there in New York um, and DC. And, and, at that time, we were in the freelance industry as well, right? Like gig economy, not getting um, bonuses. And, and it was sort of like, well, you're getting paid really well. So suck it up, right? You know, and I think this is related to some of the strikes that have happened recently. And this has sort of um, made this whole thing for me very personal. Um, I, I did not intend to become an entrepreneur. I... Um, I had this need that I encountered when I tried to go back to work after being at home with my kids and, you know, and, and I couldn't find someone to drive my kid. And, and that's ridiculous. Like, you, you know, you're willing to pay $30 for like a five minute, 10 minute drive, two miles, like nobody will do it. What on earth is going on here? Right. You yeah. know? And I think, um, I had to do 800 drives, sort of like figure out what on earth was going on, like what was happening, right? Like, why was this a real problem? It, it sort of seems surreal, but I felt very much so um, inclined to look into this and, and to make it. And I think at the end of the day, what I learned was drivers were not being taken care of well enough, okay, to do these things. Well, yeah. $30 for 15 minutes should be worth it to someone, except if they're not being compensated for the time that they have to wake up, get dressed, drive there, drive home, you know, and that became, I think, the the cornerstone of Kipu. Yeah. Okay. Um, so was this like an aha moment of yours or like, uh, because a lot of entrepreneurs, yeah. when, you, when they get into this business, the gig world, right, with an app, because app is the easy part, but they have to have the concept first, obviously. Right. Well, look, a lot of that. entrepreneurs I talked to, they go, this was an aha moment. It's like, just like Uber was, literally, right? Yeah. Uber was an aha moment. They got stuck in Christmas in a snowstorm right. in France. And they go, aha, wait a minute. Right. So so if it was, great. But um, so Kickaboo is a um, kid service. Like, is there an age limit, age group? Tell us a little bit about all that. And then I'll yeah. ask you about and that's a great question. I think you're absolutely right about that aha moment. And I think like if you listen to uh, Brian Chesky, those guys from Airbnb, I mean, they'll talk about being at um, like Obama's inauguration and not being able to find a place to stay or, you know, and I think there there are those moments. For me, this was not something I, I think I fought against it. I was in a well-paying career, very, very much so, I think. Um I loved that. I built it. It was not like, I remember my ex um, husband, uh, you know, his mom was like, you guys have careers, not jobs. And we did, you know, and they were really well paying. Right. Uh, this was something very much 
not what I planned to, to divert into. Um, but, but I realized the need was huge and there were divorces happening, um, you know, um, separations, et cetera. And also like we had all these college students who couldn't find these jobs that were worth their time as well. And so I think that was like very much something that goaded me forward in this whole thing. And, um, yeah, you know, I think Kikbu was tested over time. We, we built safe procedures, operations, et cetera. And then we like, of course, built tech to support that. Right. Um, I think tech, as you said, is very secondary to this. Uh, you can't replicate our system without the operations, without the, the, the team that we have. I think there are two other, you know, well-reputed companies in this country who are doing this. And, and I, and I respect those guys and their founders very much so, but I think they went B to B, you know, we, we were able to pull off B to C. And I think that has a lot to do with my personality and the personality of our team as well. And like what we do for drivers. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it, it was definitely a, a, it, it was definitely something that was like, wow, if you do not treat your drivers, like they are the head of the world for you because they are, okay, we're going to fail. Right. And, and every single time you do this. Now, I don't know that many people have told you guys that. I don't know. You can tell uh, me. Not, yeah. not lately. <laughs> yeah. Not lately. <laughs> I know. That, that's like uh, our approach. <laughs> I mean, look, um, so uh, you said competitors are a reputable company. So yeah. Um, yeah. Can maybe, maybe we talk about that for a minute or two? For sure. Or, yeah, okay. I think. Hop, okay. skip, drive, and Zoom, certainly. Yeah, I, well, really I, not that much. But I know Hop, skip, and drive personally because yeah. a good friend of mine is on the system mm -hmm. and my wife is on the system. Uh-huh. My wife when you is say on, on the system, do you mean like in their, like... Um, my my wife body. is on Hop, skip, and drive and she loves it. And she wouldn't, yeah. she wouldn't do, yep. she wouldn't do ride share. Yep. I'm telling you that. She's also on Uber and Lyft and DoorDash and all that. She does yeah. DoorDash and Uber, but, but she likes Hop, skip, and drive. It fits her schedule. And she drives kids around, back to school, back and forth. But you correctly stated they went more like B2B now, you know, mm -hmm. because they're with the LAUSD school system. Yeah. Yours is more like B2C. So to our audience, B2B is business to business and business yeah. B2C is business to consumer. So tell us, tell our audience what the difference may be, because I'm sure they're familiar with Hop, Skip and Drive mm -hmm. in many states. But um, what is the difference between B2B and B2C? Yeah, I mean, I think... Um... And look, I think, um, are you guys familiar? I know Harry is with Brad Tusk, like, you know, those guys yep. like at Tusk, you know, they, they yep. were involved integrally, I think early on with Uber and, and, um, and I think there, there were very serious regulations. Look, getting the insurance, I, I, I was just told flat out by the best people in the, the country uh, globe, maybe like you can't do this. Right. Like, and, um, and I think ultimately, and this is a competitive advantage that I don't like that I had. Um, I, um, I hate mentioning it. I will, you know, I think that was something that came from a family loyalty connection, et cetera. I mean, I think the entry barriers here are huge. I respect very much what they've done, all of them. Um, I do think Hop, Skip, Drive was active during COVID and they learned the huge need that is tied to schools. School buses were, were very relevant in the 60s. Like they worked for 90% of, of families and kids, et cetera. And now they don't. Like it just declined for many reasons, right? Uh, women went to work, et cetera. You know, there's not a mom at home at the end of the day. And also like kids now go to activities, et cetera. I think um, they saw that huge need and I think they realized buses are going down, Zoom did too. And, and, and they just worked better with their system, their product in that realm. I think, again, I did those 800 drives and I, I have to say like, I learned a lot from that, but it, it's also very much tied to my personality. Like, um, and, and the people we've hired, like, you know, the way we built these um, and scale these user communication channels, nobody else spends time on that, right? They're like, oh, fuck it. Like, let's let like tech take over this. Like, cool. cool. But like, not, not, 
our, our what we're doing, you know, and I think we've managed to do this. And and I respect Joanna. Um, I respect Richie so much, so much. Th- that need is huge. Um, and 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 I think both of them are one. One may have been branded a unicorn, and the other one's on their way. I guarantee that yeah. we'll get there. But like, I mean, we have the scalability that's different, right? We can move across states. You can look at our Google reviews, and people will say this: like, all right, our right, cool. You're not in Scottsdale exactly. We're not in this school district, but you can be on the suburbs. And, you know, that's been very different. Like, and I think drivers love what you're saying as far as like, let's do this. 7 a.m. ride for the next 180 school days. Yeah. I know I can rely on this. Kids go to school and then I'll do Uber and Lyft during the day, right? And they suck. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I don't want to, I, I don't want to like offend. I, I, I love them like personally, but I don't oh. like, I think that's a great need to fill, you know, pockets during the afternoon. Um, but I think our jobs, pay very well and they're consistent and people love that. And, and, you know, Sergio, I hope your wife really likes that as well. You know, well, when you guys are, when you're in California, so you know, while we're at it, while, while, <laughs> we're, while we're, we're on our way yeah. to that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, while, while we're at it. So, um, you know, our, obviously we're here to, you know, uh, if there's more of an income source for, uh, you know, with another app, it's another app. We're, we're all for it. Uh, we wouldn't have you on if I didn't think it was, it's, it's, there's a market for it, right? And I know from my wife that there is a market for it consistently. Yeah. And um, so ha- is the, talk, tell us a little bit about the onboarding process, right? Obviously, it's a little yeah. bit more scrutinized than a watered-down background check by checker, you know, whatever. Yeah. And, and you know, obviously, we know with scale, right, comes issues, right? Safety issues yep. and millions of drivers, you know, bad apples fall through the cracks. But for our community, how is that process with Kid Kaboo? And what what cities are you in too? Because pretty soon the chat's gonna fly saying, Are they here? Are they here? Are they here? Yeah. And you know, <laughs> tell us what, what cities you're in or what states you're in. Yeah. And what the onboarding process is. Thank you so much for asking that. I think um we're and we've been able again, I think hops with drive and zoom have to be localized and build um driver pools for school district needs, right? Um, I think uh, there was an incident in Seattle, Zoom, I think had to pull back with like, is it first student, whatever the bus company is, like, you know, I think they had to like have someone step in, you know, they have to really like centralize driver pools. We're not doing that. We're able to to move across states very fast. I think um, we moved across Texas in about three months and safely efficiently but and harry and i spoke about this and it was sort of like wow that's fast it is right fine but but we did betas that were extensive exhaustive in the manhattan area and like we were able to move very fast so right now we're across i'll say that and i mean across in any area florida virginia pennsylvania um texas arizona north carolina uh, nebraska Connecticut. And um, I believe that's all, Virginia. If I mention that, I think um, Maryland's coming soon. We have um, several other states that are about to launch as well. And um, for drivers, and, and, and maybe you guys can tell me if this is typical, but like, because I'm not sure, but like we pay for background checks. Um, we do do in like in person at first. And then um, now it's, I think, on Zoom interviews, right? Um, we we pay yeah, checker, um, whoever we're dealing with at that time, right? Like, um, and, and we do exhaustive checks, right? Um, and then also like uh, rideshare mechanic, I think, do you guys know H- Hamed? I think Harry yeah. does for sure. Yeah, love those guys. And, and they're, um, you know, they're close friends of us and they've been really cooperative. And they're like, they're just like, let's like, take this on. Like if we see someone that's crazy, whatever, like, cool, we'll we'll tell you. Right. So we're paying for all these things. And then we also have like camera installers on the ground. Um, and they'll also raise red flags when they have to. And, and, and so I think it's, it's really exhaustive, you know? Um, I think we do at least one or two background checks through two separate companies every single time. Yeah. 
and okay. yeah. Um, how about so you said camera installers? Are you um, mandating that uh, dash cams are installed in each car? No, so we not mandating. So we've only had one instance, and and this is going to go the opposite of the way that you think. Okay, so one instance in which someone brought this up. Because okay. at first I was like, oh, privacy. We had like the best lawyers in the country. And we were like, all right, every driver is going to be like, F you, no, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not putting this in my car. You know, that's crazy. Okay. So we did not have that experience. There was one time when we decided we were not sending cameras out immediately because we wanted someone to do like a test drive to make sure. Because look, you, we're paying for it, right? So it's a lot of money, right? Uh, we work with Display Ride. I think you guys know them as well. And yep. love those guys, you know? And But it, but it's a lot of money. And like, so at some point uh, we were doing a test drive um, and this woman who had grandchildren and children said, look, I want this right like now, straight up. Like you can trust me. I'm going to keep like stay with you she wanted it for her security and i was like wow i always thought this would be like an invasion of privacy yeah didn't see that coming and she was yeah. like i'm not driving without it and i was like good for you well, you know well, that's yeah. crazy to we me. recommend to every gig worker regardless of how many hours they're driving even if they're driving for five hours but for your personal privacy i mean you know i know dash cam, dash cam is a must but these days i think um, so too yeah yeah, so yeah. let's say, um, so I'm a driver in one of the states that's um, Kit Kabo is in, right? And I sign on. Mm -hmm. um, the app is ready to go, obviously, on the consumer side as well as the driver side. So yeah. you had no issues there. Um, do you consider Kit Kabo a startup? Do you, is, I mean, is, is, it, is that what you would think it is? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, I think we're at that stage where you sort of assume that you're, or know that you're moving from like we've had a transition um from a startup team to people with like early mid-stage high growth startup like experience right and 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 um so i think we're moving out of that i i do think um you know with this next raise i think we're raising a few million right now and um yeah, I we're moving out of that. I think we've had a lot of demand for the the stock in this company. I, I don't want to say too much about that because I'm not sure what yeah. I should say. But like, um, I think it's it's been uh, we've had people sort of almost fight at at a very high level, like and and high return. Like, I think that's that's been amazing. I, you know, I think we're transitioning, right? You know, but I think it moves fast, right? But again as I think that's old Harry at some point, um, as much as it, it's early days for us, as far as like, look, we launched Texas first date mid 2022. Right. But um, you know, we, we had been doing this for a very long time. It does not feel new to me. Right. But I, again, like I think we, we talked to our, our app team that I absolutely adore, absolutely adore. And, and we're working overseas and I spoke with one of them today, one of their leaders, and I was like, look, it's time to rebrand. We're, we're going to diversify revenue streams and, and we have these things coming in right now. You know, so I think it's we're, we're sort of at that stage. Uh, we were savvy. Right. We did a lot with little like I think yeah. that didn't always happen in ride sharing. Yeah. Right. But yeah. So well, on my, the edge. If, if I were to recommend anything to you <laughs> as a CEO. Please would be would be uh you know we have a kiss method <laughs> oh god um, yeah yeah Tell so me. the kiss method <laughs> look I, I honestly if the less you gamify your app the less you make it feel like it's a casino the yes. the less you play with people's endorphins meaning you know rebels and whistles and all these wonderful colors and showing up right um i think the more drivers will gravitate towards the app because it's become such a gamified and gamified space that it's tiring really i mean i want to focus on my yeah. driving i want to focus on who i'm picking up i want to focus on making money i don't need all these ancillary things to tell me go here go there you know but anyway yeah. so that would be my one recommendation so no um, i thank you for that and i think you're absolutely right and i you know that's something i think simplify 
you know, we have to be available, but, but the things you guys talk about, I, I've learned so much from you guys, if I can say that really fast and go sure. like, but, but I've learned a lot. Like I, I'm not, sometimes you guys stun me and I'm like, add up like this does not multiply into this and, and do the division. Like, wow. Like search. <laughs> you learn, uh, you know what you learn, Rebecca, you learn <laughs> what not to do. If you watch yeah. us seriously, because I mean, we break things down, right? I mean, we call it the way we see it and you learn what not to do. And this is not a, sim this is not a rocket science. You just pick up a kid and point a drop off B and then do it again. And that's it. We don't need any of this other stuff. If it pays decent, yeah. obviously drivers are going to sign up. So when are you going nationwide? Because I know I'm going to get 50 emails tomorrow saying, are they in California? Are they in Nevada? Are they in Utah? Yeah. Like I think we have several states in the works. California was just moved up high, high on our list. That's going to be one of the quicker ones. Um, you know, I think we have, we're moving fast, right? I mean, again, like we launched, our first state in, in mid 2022. And like now we're in eight states. Okay. And I think, you know, we have the insurance we have, like, um, we, we, we just have the scaling process in place. I think, you know, I, yeah. And I want to make sure the drivers there are, are reward. I think that's where like the diversification of like maybe revenue streams comes in because I do think like we can find a way to like, you know, your wife, once those regular drives, right? Yep. Great. And then what can we do for her in, in the middle of the day? Because there are a million, like, um, what is that company? Johanna or something, Johanna that just uh, was released. Um, and I, and, and that's amazing, right? It's just like errands for families. And that's something right. we've always planned to do. And I've done before. And, you know, I, you know, I think there's a lot of needs, right? At, during the day. And, and yeah, so we'll, we'll be moving fast. For okay. sure, across these All states. Right. So yeah. when they do come to California, I'll have my wife sign up. I'll probably sign up. Oh yeah, I, I'm gonna like go on a, the drive. I'll fly out there. I love LA. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I was there for like go. ten years. Yeah, I, I'll I'll fly out there, and she and I, and I'll videotape her if she'll sign off. Oh great. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, the the one other thing that I actually wanted to talk to you about is, um, is the service only, um, for um parents let's say who are not able to take their kids to let's say soccer practice or gym classes or school it's not just school right it's not just school and no, back. certainly not I, and okay. i think that's the the differentiation i learned mostly in jersey i think um okay. you know that they drew a hard line there um for for reasons i can get into later <laughs> like yeah. they, they were really uh, school buses go to schools and, and I'm like, wow, dude, are you 50 years back? Like, seriously? Like, and the governor was like, really, they should not be saying this. Like, you know, yeah. I think people understand there's a lot of needs in, yeah. in modern children's daily transportation lives and families. Yeah. And look, cause parents go to work. Yeah. You know, you know it's, it, we're not back when in the ages when the school bus work and like families have a mom at home every day, right. you know? I, yeah. So we're, we're certainly diversifying, but I, I've also learned like, um, I'm someone who's very confident. I'm five, two, I weigh like one twenty. I'm, I'm not big, like, but I'm scared to get into an Uber sometimes. And I'm, I'm cop, you know, I, I'm, I don't know if I could like hold my own, I, you know, but if I take my kids, like, I don't want to do that. We've had a lot of women, a lot of like elderly people, yeah. um, you know, I think who have won and, and Uber introduced Uber teen and people are like, yeah. wow, did that interrupt you. Right. Like, okay. Fair question. Second time they tried it. Well, that was um, coming. So you, you preceded me. So that, that was coming. Yeah, that was the yeah. question. No. Yeah. And, and good question. Then, I mean, I think that's like, is there a potential partnership that acquisition we'll talk about? Yeah. I mean, I think they're not going to change their model, which is fast, cheap. And again, this is something like in TV, you always did this. You could do it well, fast or cheap like whatever you choose two of the three, that's it. And they've chosen theirs and, and we've chosen ours. Right. And I think they, they've tried this. They're not going to um, change their model and they shouldn't like, they're doing very well. Uh, I, you guys talked to Dar, I assume, like, I think, I think highly of what they're doing, but, 
but but it's not it's not affecting our market, right? These guys are people who are the teens going into their cars are strong football playing. I don't want to stereotype teens who can hold their own yeah. in a car. Right? <clears throat> and and I hate to say that, but but no no parent is putting a girl, a little girl, like a 13 year old into a car. Like, I'm sorry, that's, it's not happening. Right. And, and Harry and I have discussed this length, I, you know, but I do think that I want to say this and I, I don't think that I, I, I'm going to say what I heard and read. And I did look into this. I believe that happened because 70% of their interest was from these on-demand teen rides. Um, I did read that from a knowledgeable source. Um, I, I don't want to cite that precisely, but but I do think the need is huge. And yeah, um, yeah I think well, also, you know, it creates for them, it creates, a, a, um, you know, the, the 13 to 17 year olds are in their universe now. They're, they're in their system. And then yeah. at 18, they could create their own accounts. I don't understand. Why yeah. Uber does oh, that, that's, that but we're, not, we're not here for Uber. We're here for Kickaboo. So yeah. here's the, I, I, I have, we have a couple of minutes left. So tell us in the States, which I'm, we have viewers in every state, but tell us why anybody should sign up to drive for a Kickaboo. Tell us why. And Again, then we'll close I, with that. Yeah. So I think the one thing I learned from doing 800 rides, the first time I did that, I was like, all right, cool. This is a 15 minute ride for a three-year-old. So, and I was like, well, it's close to my house, very like three minute ride. Um, I'll take $13 an hour, like, or not an hour, but like to do the ride, like it's 15 minutes in theory, right? Except that it's not like you have to get dressed, go out, then change a kid's diaper, possibly like, you know, there are different things involved. And, and by the time you get home, it's not 13. And so I went back to this mom and I was like, cause she was like the one who sort of threw this idea, like please, Jennifer Cullum, I'll call you out right now. Um, if, I hope she sees this. Um, but she was like, you know, tell us if this feels fair. And I was like, all right, it doesn't feel fair, right? It's 15 minutes with your kid, but the work involved yeah. in getting there is like much more. And so at some point we set a minimum ride price of $23.50 um, per ride. It may be a little bit higher now, but like we pay drivers 60% of that. And uh, so that equals out to about $14 for mile, like mileage minutes, whatever. But it's like a two to three minute, like mile and, and 15 minute or less ride, right? Okay. So that that's quick, right? And then we work with drivers to sort of like uh, supplant that by, you know, stacking rides one-on-one. -on -one. We have, like, I know people say they can't reach Uber or Lyft. You can, re you know who to reach, I think. <laughs> Uh, in a second <laughs> like you're like I, i'm not happy and we'll be like all right cool we're gonna figure this out <laughs> right now for you and we'll make you yeah. happy and we stack yeah. rides you know and i think that's really where uh, uh drivers uh should feel like they're welcome and they have felt like they were well compensated we had one driver in austin texas i believe um possibly Dallas and, and she texted me after I I personally wrote to her and all of our drivers over Christmas I was like thank you guys so much like one-on-one -on -one. um and she was like this is the best ride sharing company I've ever worked for and I mean that and and she was in a place where this other two companies had been active and she yeah. said by far this is the fairest the most like well compensating um communicative you know and and I'm proud of that you know, well, I, you know, I think I think I think it's definitely there's a space for it. Right. And, you know, you're going to find out. I mean, if there is demand, obviously there is. Otherwise, you wouldn't be spreading like all through the country. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do agree. Actually, the, the macro economy, the way it is now, people have to work longer hours now. You know, both parents now may have to work if the wife wasn't working. She has to work now because inflation is killing everybody. And, you know, these kids have needs, like you said, Uh you know, I don't know I a know. kid that does, that's not into three different sports and two different gymnastics <laughs> clubs. Like, 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 yeah. like my day. And, you know, they need to be driven. And then, uh, you know, if, if a grandma can't do it or an uncle can't do it, hey, you know, there is a need for it. And you guys are going to fill that need. So I want to thank you for showing up. I, I Thank you guys so it. much. I'm your biggest fan, both of you. <laughs> I like adore you. All. I love Harry, too. I, I like I'm not we don't like everyone. <laughs> I'll say this. But I, I no, adore no. you guys. Um, 
there's no way I can like sponsor a um one of those draws you do tonight. Can I like Venmo one of you money? <laughs> oh, you. Um, oh, if you that. want, sure. I don't know. Yeah, can can add 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 <laughs> Wait, we can, can, we can add a, we can add an, you text an, me or like email me right now. Like I'll do it. I swear. No, no, no. We'll, <laughs> like, we'll do it. We'll just, we'll just, yeah. okay. We'll add a, we'll add an extra 25 from Kid Kabo. Mm -hmm. So we'll yep. mention it. We'll do the drawing. And then we'll send you the winner's email address when you take care of it. How about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm just a huge proponent of supporting drivers. And, and again, I think based on my experience previously, like, uh, you know, uh, supporting people in the gig economy, I, I understand how hard it is. Yeah. 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 But again, thank yeah. you so much for showing up. Yeah. Uh, I know. Let me you know, know how I can support uh, you guys, please. Oh, uh, we, you know, just watch us get past Chris. word of mouth. We know our community is growing really very, very yeah. quickly as well. And, uh, you know, we, we appreciate the support, really. I mean, I think we're here for drivers. And if Kid Kaboo is another tool in the toolbox, two thumbs up for me. So, please, um, yeah, I'm a yeah. huge proponent of what you guys have been doing and, and always happy to support, yeah, our team as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time. I'm so grateful that you guys had us. Oh, no, we'll, 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 we'll do updates. We'll always do updates. So we'll do updates when you're, you know, opening up in new states. You let us know. We'll just do a quick update. I mean, you know, our community is drivers and drivers are looking for new sources of income. Yeah. And why not? Right. So I will. For sure. Okay, cool. um, if you have any leads in Nebraska, Nebraska, we, we should push. Like, I, yeah, we should really push Nebraska. There are a lot of okay. drivers there. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So, right, anyway, so drivers, if, if you're here oh, near yeah. Nebraska, there you go. That's right. <laughs> you know where to go. Sergio at the rideshareguy.com. I will be Kid Kabo support now. On top of Lyft, <laughs> Uber, DoorDash, I'll be Kid Kabo support now. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Rebecca. You? And hope you feel better too. Yeah. Thank you so much, Harry. Thank you for having us if you're listening. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. I'll talk to you soon. And again, Venmo me that or send me the info. No yeah. worries. We'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. All right. Thank talk you. Talk to you guys soon. You. Look forward to watching the rest. All right. Thanks for watching. That short little clip was from our live stream, Show Me the Money Club with Sergio and myself. Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you subscribe. Turn on all notifications so you'll be notified when we go live, as well as all of our awesome content. Make sure to check out this video right here, which will take you to the entire live stream, or check out this video right there. All right, drive smart, everyone.